Hi, I'm George and I'm a registered respiratory therapist and I'm coming to you today from Alberta, Canada. And what I'd like to show you today are these. Nope, it's not a floral bouquet for your significant other or grandma or grandpa. These are nasopharyngeal airways. Nasopharyngeal airways are also commonly called NPAs. NPA. And that stands for nasopharyngeal airway. So why would we want to use a nasopharyngeal airway? Well, these are used pretty much to alleviate obstruction that occurs due to some sort of soft tissue. And the soft tissue that usually causes obstructions in the back of the pharynx is the tongue. When the patient loses consciousness or loses muscle tone, the tongue can tend to move backwards or posteriorly. And what that does is occludes the pharynx. And if the pharynx is occluded, gas can't pass from the upper airway down to the lower airway. So by having the nasopharyngeal airway in place, that tends to help alleviate soft tissue obstruction. The other reason you might want to put a nasopharyngeal airway into your patient is if you had to do numerous amounts of suctioning of your patient, you could put the NPA in, NPA in because that will help establish a route for suctioning with your suction catheter. And se retained secretions aren't really good for your patients because retained secretions, number one, is a perfect area in a nice warm area or a perfect substance in a nice warm area where bacteria can grow and thrive. The other reason you might uh, want to get rid of your secretions is because secretions contribute to increased airway resistance. So it makes it more difficult for the patients to breathe in and out or for you to ventilate the patient if you had to with a manual resuscitator or a mechanical ventilator. So NPAs are really beneficial to remove secretions for the patients that can still spontaneously breathe on their own. So what type of patient would you put a nasopharyngeal airway into? Well, typically if a patient happens to be unconscious, and has a soft tissue obstruction due to the tongue falling backwards, a great airway to use is the oropharyngeal airway. But what if that patient has a gag reflex or is conscious or semi-conscious? Well, oropharyngeal airways aren't tolerated well by conscious patients or semi-conscious patients. So the airway that would take care of that, since you couldn't use an, air, an OPA, is the NPA. Now the parts of the NPA are the flange right over here, the body, and the distal end. There is no bite block with the nasopharyngeal airway because the nasopharyngeal airway goes in through the patient's external nares, nasal cavity, pharynx, and then winds up in that hypopharyngeal area. So it doesn't go in through the mouth, so we don't need to really worry about a, uh, a bite block incorporated into the design of the NPA. That looks like a mustache. The design of the NPA. The NPA is also made of a material that is fairly pliable and soft, so it can bend to the contours of the nasal cavity and uh, to the pharynx. And it's also made out of a rigid enough material so that when the patient takes a big breath in, it doesn't collapse as it softens up a little bit more due to body heat. So it's got some really cool features to it. Plus, if you can see that, it's hollow. So once it's inserted, the patients can inhale through it. The other part is the bevel. This is called the bevel. Now, depending on which reference you look at, some references say you should insert the NPA directed away from the nasal septum, or you should insert it towards the nasal septum. My technique is to insert it towards the nasal septum because uh, the way the turbinates lay inside the patient's nares and the nasal passages, you usually do a little bit less damage when you're inserting the NPA by inserting it with the bevel facing the bevel, sorry, facing the septum of the patient. So, how do you prepare a nasopharyngeal airway? Well, first of all, they need to be sized for the patient. So, individually size that MPA to the patient. And they need to be lubricated. So, part of that preparation is sizing and lubrication. So, I'm going to show you how to size the nasopharyngeal airway. I'm going to zoom in on our patient. There's our patient. So, when you're sizing the nasopharyngeal airway, what you need to do is find the nair, find the earlobe. The nasal passage comes down, or the airway comes down like so, and it goes nasal cavity, nasal pharynx, the pharynx, larynx, trachea, etc. So if we're sizing this to alleviate a soft tissue obstruction, and that's why we're using the NPA, we want to make sure that it gets down to that level of the pharynx where it does, in fact, help move the tongue off the back of the pharynx, the posterior pharynx. So in sizing it, what you need to do is you need to size the NPA from the nair of the patient to the earlobe or 
two centimeters beyond the angle of the jaw, the angle of the jaw. So take your NPA, place the flange by the nair, see if it goes down to the earlobe. If it does, like it does in this particular case, it's the right size patient, or sorry, the right size airway. You can also take it like so and place it beyond the angle of the jaw. If it goes roughly two centimeters beyond the angle of the jaw, again, it's probably the right size airway. Now we also have to size it for diameter. And the reason you size it for a diameter is that you want to make sure you've got an airway in that is big enough to minimize airway resistance, but at the same token, not too big that it's going to apply pressure on the nostril of the patient that it's inserted through, causing possibly necrotic tissue. So you're sizing it for a diameter to the nair, as well as length. So if we look at this person's nair, I'm looking to see if there's any septal deviation as well when I'm taking a look at the patient, and I don't see any septal deviation. I'm looking at the size of the patient's nair. I need to grab the appropriate airway that's going to, again, facilitate length as well as diameter. So I'm going to take this airway and size it. And it looks like it's the right size airway. Now I'm going to take a look at the diameter of the airway and the diameter of the patient's nair. Looks like it's the right size as well. So now I'm going to lubricate it. Now to lubricate, the nasopharyngeal airway, all you really need to do is lubricate the distal end right over here. You don't need to lubricate the whole airway because if you do so, it's going to be hard to hold on to. So I'm just going to put some lubricant on the distal portion that's going to slide through the nares first, and then that lubricant's going to travel with the NPA all the way down into the patient's airway and eventually down into the pharynx. So let's put this NPA in. So here we go. Tell the patient, of course, that you're going to be placing the airway in. Make sure you've got your gloves on and any other types of PPE that you would want to have on. So, sir, we're going to put the nasopharyngeal airway, or NPA, into your nose, and it's going to sit in the back of your throat to help you breathe better. So gently bevel towards the septum, right? There's the bevel. I'm placing it towards the septum. It's going to go into the patient. Now I'm going to aim not towards the forehead. I'm kind of aiming backwards. And in aiming backwards, it's going to glide in in this fashion a lot easier. I'm going to continue to advance the NPA until the flange is right outside the patient's nostril. That's the correct length to go to. Now what I'm going to do is ask the patient to take a nice big breath in. And in doing so, I'm also going to auscultate the patient's chest to see the effect of placing the NPA in. So I'm going to listen to the patient's chest. OK, so take some big breaths in, big breath in. And I've got good air entry with the patient. If the patient wasn't breathing, then obviously I'd have to do something else. And that something else is grab the mounting resuscitator and start ventilating my patient with the appropriate amount of volume at the appropriate FiO2. So to kind of recap what we've done, we put a nasopharyngeal airway into our patient, we sized it for uh, length and we sized it for diameter. We then, after we put the device in, we assessed the placement of it to ensure that the patient was breathing from it. We could also, again, if you needed to, suction out the back of the patient's pharynx by using a suction catheter and placing the suction catheter down there and removing any kind of secretions that exist in that particular area. I guess I'm zoomed out as far as I can. So that's nasopharyngeal airways. Pretty basic, pretty easy, pretty easy to insert. Make sure you do your preparation before you see your patient. Make sure you do your infection control. Grab your equipment. Make sure that the indications of why you want to insert an airway into the patient are suitable for the MPA because, again, it only allows, to, allows for suctioning and it does uh, help create patency with a soft tissue obstruction. If the obstruction is deeper in your patient's airway than the back of the pharynx, then this airway isn't going to help you very much. All right, so MPA airways used on semi-conscious or fully conscious patients that have airway issues in that pharyngeal airway facilitates suctioning helps to open up the airway and create patency for ventilation. This has been George, Registered Respiratory Therapist. I hope you like this video. If you have any other suggestions for uh, videos, please leave me a comment uh, about that or also give me a comment on this video and how it could be improved. If you noticed at the beginning of the video, I didn't have gloves on. 
when I was sizing, but I put my gloves on because I remembered, hey, when you're doing a procedure, always have your gloves on. And again, this is not a real patient. Have a good day. Oh, didn't shut off. <laughs>